Okay, let's see a holding circuit in application. Bear with me, I think we're gonna have to go over the five minutes. Okay, we've got an application here where we've got a tank, we're filling the tank. And let's see, it's automatic. When it gets empty, it fills. When it gets full, it stops filling. And then vice versa, it goes back and forth. Maybe someone's actually controlling the drain, they need some liquid and they press a button and they activate the drain and the liquid goes out. But for now, what we wanna do is design a circuit that just keeps the liquid full. We keep the tank full. Okay, good. So. What we're gonna do is take a look at these guys. We're gonna put these into the application and we're gonna take a look at, well, when do we want the pump to come on? Well, we want the pump to come on when it gets empty. We also probably wanna start the cycle with a button. Okay, so we're gonna put a holding circuit in to start it. And we're gonna put a standard stop start rung. Okay, here we go. So I'm gonna do this, again, 24 volts, and I'm gonna put a stop in here and I'm gonna put a start in here. Okay, now I'm gonna put my relay R1. I'm just gonna go for R1 so I can do this quickly. Usually we write RC, now that's gonna be R1-1. There, we're good. So I press play here, the whole thing starts. I'm gonna use a contact from here in almost every rung to kind of turn it all on and off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna start here now I'm gonna write R1-2. Now, what do I want to happen? Well, if the tank is empty, I want the tank to fill. Okay, so how do we get the signal that the event of it being empty happened? Well, from the lower float switch, okay? So when the lower float switch becomes open, okay? When the lower float switch becomes open, so I'm gonna draw my float switch like this. It's a normally open float switch, when it becomes open, you know what? What am I gonna turn on? Well, I'm just gonna throw it onto a relay because I know I'm gonna have to reverse the logic. R2, okay, good. So this is my lower float switch. The reason I'm putting it on a relay is because when it becomes open, I wanna turn the pump on. Yeah, usually when a switch becomes open, something turns off. So I have to reverse the logic. Okay, good. So now I've got my relay two. What I wanna do is turn my pump on. So, I mean, my first thought would be to do this, put my pump here, but I can't because I want my pump to come on when this becomes open. So that's not an option. What I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna do this. I'm gonna actually gonna take a contact from R2-1 and I'm gonna put it into its own relay. Okay, so now I have three relays and now what's gonna happen is that I think this is gonna work. When the liquid gets low, this will become open. This then will become de-energized, and then this will become open. Oh, that's not gonna work. Right, I was reversing the logic, yeah. That means I do this. If I'm reversing the logic of this, I connect it to a relay, and then I just connect it to a normally closed. Okay, good. So, when this becomes open, that becomes closed, and then that becomes energized. I can also put my pump here if I wanted. Okay, good. So I'm gonna put my pump here. Sweet. So now, again, I'm gonna take a look at this. I'm not touching anything. If I don't touch anything, that's open, that's not energized. That's open, that's not energized. That's open, even if this was closed or open, nothing would happen anyway, because that's open. And in this case, oh, okay, my actual pump is on. So you know what I wanna do? I either wanna do two things. One is I wanna put an R, 1-3 here, or I can run this up to here. And I think I'll do that because I may need an R-3 somewhere else. Okay, good. So now what I've got is I've got power here, and all of this is dependent on whether or not I press play over here. Okay, good. So now, again, the logic is such that the pump will not be on if I don't press this. Now, let's take a look at the logic. I press play, I say start. That energizes, that, clo that closes, I let go of it, that remains closed because that's energizing and that's keeping that closed and that's keeping that energized and vice versa, my holding circuit's working. Now, this remains closed because that's energized, so therefore if my float switch became open, this would de-energize and this would become closed and my relay would come on and my pump would come on. Now, why did I put a relay here? because of this, I need another holding circuit. Watch this, I want my pump to stay on after the liquid goes here. See the problem? If the logic is this, 
If the fluid is below the float switch, then turn the pump on. Well, that would then mean that if the fluid is above the switch, the pump's not on. But I want it to stay on. So I need to hold the signal or hold the event of this becoming open. Okay, good. So watch this. What I'm doing here is when this becomes open, that becomes closed and the pump comes on. But when the liquid goes up to here, this becomes closed. Yeah. And then that becomes open. Okay, I have a problem. When this becomes open, then the pump turns off. So the liquid's only going to get up to the lower float switch and then stop. So you know what I do? I put a holding circuit. I'm holding this signal. And that's going to be my R3-1. Okay, so now what's happening here is that this fluid, even though it's above here and this is closed and that is open, it's not turning the pump on because I'm kind of overriding this temporary signal. See a holding circuit? It kind of holds on to a temporary signal. It's a holding circuit. Okay, good. So now I'm holding on to this and therefore my pump is staying on. Now, when do I want my pump to turn off? Well, when the liquid gets up. Remember that concept of a termination contact? Yeah, it's pretty important. Um, this guy's kind of locked in. I mean, I could stop the whole process by just hitting this, which would de-energize this, which would open this, which would kill the whole thing. But really, I need to put a termination contact in here somewhere. So really, what I should do is, I'm gonna redraw this over here. And it's amazing, you know, whiteboards are good things. And when you're doing your ladder logic, you will be changing stuff all the time. So just expect to be changing things all the time. Again, I'm gonna rewrite this. Okay, back to where I started. If this becomes open, that becomes closed, my pump comes on, the liquid goes up here, when it goes above here, that will become closed, that will become open, and this temporary signal will go away, but it's okay, I got it covered because I'm holding on to it. Now I need to add that termination contact. Well, you know what, you know what, I think, I'm actually gonna try, I'm gonna try this. Again, you know what, just try stuff. If it works, it works, if it doesn't, try something else. This is the upper float switch. I think I'm getting there because, you know, the event that turns the pump off is when the liquid goes up. So when the liquid goes up, I want the signal from this to shut the pump off. So I want the signal from this to terminate my holding circuit, which is keeping the pump on. Okay, does that work? Well, I think you can see that it doesn't because actually when the liquid is here, that's open, right? So I can actually go get a limit switch, sorry, I can actually go get a float switch that has a normally closed nature to it. Or I can take my float switch, and here we go, reversing logic, this is really cool. And it's okay for me to put my float switch down here, even though it's below the logic. This is my upper float switch, in that even though I've drawn my upper float switch below my lower float switch, it's okay. The relays don't care which way they're connected. Okay, here we go. So that's R4, wow, this is getting complicated, but you know what, that's how it works. R4-1. Now, the reason I'm putting this onto a relay is so that I can reverse the logic. Okay, holding circuit and reversing logic. Take a look. I press play here, that becomes closed, that becomes closed. This is open because there's no fluid in the tank. This guy is open. That guy is actually closed because this is in its normal state and it's open and that's in its normal state, therefore it's closed. So therefore current can go this way. Now, if this guy is open, this guy is closed. So therefore current goes here, it energizes this, turns the pump on, pumps on. Liquid starts to go up. The liquid goes above this. This becomes closed, which is a problem because it's connected to a normally closed contact, which then becomes open. That normal close contact becomes open, but it's okay. That temporary signal, we got it held because we're holding it with this guy and that relay. So this holds onto this contact, even though this becomes open, the pump stays on. The liquid gets all the way up to here. When it does get to there, this guy becomes closed and this energizes. That contact goes into its active state. It's a normally closed contact, so it becomes open and my termination contact shuts the pump down. Make sense? Pretty cool to see this in application. 
Holding circuits are really powerful. In this case, we're holding two signals. Those two signals are coming from two events. Those two events are buddy pressing play, right? So when I press start here, I'm holding on to the event that I pressed start with a holding circuit. The other holding circuit being used here is the event that the liquid went below the lower float switch. So when the liquid went below the lower float switch, this guy over here became closed. Yeah, went into its normal state, became closed. I'm holding on to that temporary event. So this is telling me about the event of the liquid going above the lower float switch. When it becomes closed, then this relay knows and this pump knows that the liquid has gone below this lower float switch. Okay, so the reason this gets closed is because that gets open. Remember, we're reversing the logic. Again, the holding circuit here is holding the event that someone pressed the button. The holding circuit here is holding the event that the liquid went below the lower float switch. The reason we need to hold on to that event is just because it's really temporary. Because as soon as that happens, the pump comes in and makes the liquid go up and it closes again. Holding circuits, really powerful things. Okay, let's get more complicated.